even though I've been playing Starfield for, frankly, too much time recently, it doesn't scratch that particular itch that a game on PSVR 2 does. And that game, of course, is No Man's Sky. Despite both being set in space, these games can't really be compared. One is a role-playing game where you have lots of conversations with people, you follow quest lines that lead to lots of dialogue, some action, some massive galaxy-spanning plots, with the main quest line that ends in a very specific place that every player is going to end up at. Whereas No Man's Sky is more of a sandbox. You're free to explore and create whatever you want. All the travel is completely seamless from point to point if you want it to be, which contrasts the Starfield's loading screens, but I love them both. But one thing Starfield doesn't have is obviously VR. So I managed to pry myself away from my favorite Bethesda game in years to play some more PSVR 2 with No Man's Sky. And let me tell you, I'm glad I did. Slow it down a little bit. Whoa, what are these fellas? Oh, these are the engines, holy shit. Oh my god, look at that. Oh my god, this is deep. It's okay, we're fine. There's another massive piece over there. That's massive over there, Jesus Christ. Oh my god, I can walk on it. <laughs> the fact there's down freighters in the water is so cool to me. From the initial jump scare that I got from the sandworm that inhabits the planet that I left off on last time, I've just loaded in and been blinded. But you know what? I'm okay with that one. Ah! I was fully thrown back into the world of No Man's Sky uh, in the most horrible way possible. I hate that. Oh my god. I think I just... I need a moment. I think I just had a heart attack. And that's just sped up my exit, so let's leave. <laughs> but going quickly back to exploring planets, space, space stations, and everything in between was just a joy. No sandworms on this planet. Good stuff. What are you? You're like... You're not an animal. I can feed you batteries. <laughs> Onwards feral creature and although i talked about it quite a lot in my last video there are some things that i want to touch on that make this update so damn good to no man's sky even if you're just a player that likes to explore in creative or free roam like myself there are so many things to do and see and one of the things which the update has really helped is scale god you real you really see how massive asteroids are now that's that's huge it's like bigger than, much bigger than my ship. Previously, I'd fly out of atmosphere and see some asteroids, you know, in an asteroid field outside the planet's ring, and I'd think, that looks cool, but it's blurry as hell. But now, everything's crystal clear, and it really puts it into perspective how huge some of these ice crystals and asteroids really are. There we go. Let's exit. Oh, my, my hands are backwards. Shit, shit, shit. Whoa. Well, that's stunning. What even are these? Space ice. I think. Wow. Oh my god. Again, it's the same as the last video, man. I was sat there thinking, how can all of this be rendered at once? How can this... Like, even those in the distance are rendered over there. How is this possible? If you're looking for basically a sightseeing game on PSVR 2, or a survival game on PSVR 2, or a space exploration game on PSVR 2, No Man's Sky covers all of that. You can either go around in free roam like I do and take in the sights, find different animals, species of plants, different types of planets. You can be creative with it. You can build huge bases. You can get vehicles to explore around with. You can go the survival route, pick a really harsh planet to survive on and try and live there. There's just so much to see and do. And in VR, even with the restrictions that No Man's Sky has due to its very vast control scheme, it's still immersive as hell. Object of interest, oh! I wanted to see one of these. And now we're here with the new graphics. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so down, take me there. I'm assuming in survival this will all, you know, be stuff you can salvage. 
For me, it's not really anything useful because I'm just exploring. But... No, that's amazing. That was sick. I haven't been able to play co-op since the update dropped, and I also haven't been able to go around and explore some other players' bases like I've been recommended. I will get around to that, I promise. But honestly, this game is just something that I jump into to relax in. This and Kayak VR Mirage make up two of the most relaxing experiences on PSVR 2 if you go in creative mode on No Man's Sky. It's a great place to unwind after a day of doing, well, nothing for me currently, but <laughs> it's still great. And jumping back into areas like the Anomaly, which used to look like a completely blurry mess, and seeing them in perfect HDR clarity is awesome. There's the Anomaly. This is my first time going in here since the new graphics update. So I am very excited. Wow, uh... Okay, there's a lot more scale now, and everything looks like I'm seeing it with my eyes. Oh, this is a player. Player! I'm trying to wave at you. Speaking of HDR, the OLED screens are something that I haven't sung enough praises about, because oh my god, they are incredible on No Man's Sky. One incredible planet, Jesus. It's the colors, man. It really is on this headset. They just blow me away every time I look anywhere. Especially in a game like this where everything looks so abstract. Some more realistic looking games like Horizon Call of the Mountain or Resident Evil 8 look great because of the OLED panels. And especially with the dark and light contrast in some areas. And also, you know, on realistic looking objects like leaves, trees and Horizon. And a highlight for me in Resident Evil 8 are various fabrics that look properly real. However, in No Man's Sky, it's the opposite. These things don't look that realistic in terms of their visual design, like the planets and the asteroids, but it's the colors that make them pop and make them stand out apart from each other that really draw you in and make you feel grounded. A world doesn't have to feel real in a realistic looking sense, as long as it's built up and fits visually in a cohesion that makes sense, you can feel like you're in a properly lived in and different environment, and I think No Man's Sky excels in that. Is this an underwater cave? <gasps> okay, no, it's an underwater hole, I got my hopes up. But anyway, I think that's everything I've got to say about No Man's Sky in terms of the visual upgrade. My final verdict on the update is that it's amazing. You should try it if you already have No Man's Sky or pick it up on sale if you haven't and you think it looks like fun. My next couple of videos on this game will probably either be exploring other people's bases in VR or going on some derelict ship hunts because I find those really cool. But no matter what they are, I hope you enjoyed this one. And if you did enjoy, feel free to like and subscribe. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Everything's incredibly red and dead. When something's making squelchy noises, I think it's my legs. Um. <laughs>